because uh, believing in the Trinity is pretty important. The Trinity is God in three forms. Jesus is not God, but yet he is God. It's very important. Uh, the Trinity can be described almost like water, uh, dihydrogen monoxide, if you know the chemical name of water. Uh, I know I'm a weirdo. I know the chemical name. Uh, but dihydrogen monoxide uh, has three forms. It's one of the only elements that you can see in nature that has all three of its forms come up very easily. Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I want to go over a little bit of more of the philosophical side. Like, how do you tell that you're actually a Christian? Well, that's a complicated question. It's very philosophical in many ways. Uh, because it comes down to the Bible and how uh, before you would be a wicked person and evil and all the other stuff that goes along with it, generalizing that it's just sin. You are a sinner and you've come into the light of the Lord. You've been purified by his blood, by a gift. Uh, and you accepted that gift. That's the important part. You accepted that gift through Christ. Uh, and another thing that's probably key that I should mention is Christ. I know many Christians say it all the time. Many don't know at all what it means. Uh, Christ is the Greek word for Messiah. Uh, so essentially anytime anyone says Christ, it just is Messiah. It's referred to Jesus. And even if you search it up on a dictionary, it'll get it wrong because they don't actually understand the definition even in the dictionary. Uh, but moving on from that, uh, there are many verses in the Bible that actually talk about this philosophical question. Uh, you can look at James chapter 1, uh, John chapter 4, uh, Romans 12, 1 to 2. There's even John 3, 16 that helps you a little bit. Uh, well, actually, it's John 3, 16 and all the verses that follow that help you with that. But uh, the big deal is, and this video is going to be a little short, that you are a wicked person, even after, this is important, it's even after you have accepted Christ and his gift of salvation. You are still wicked, you are still a sinner, you will still be tempted by the spirit of the Antichrist. This is very important. It's actually speaking of in 1 John chapter 4. Actually, if you're wondering where Antichrist really came from, well, there's your book right there. It's in First John. Uh, Antichrist, the term, the literal term, came from First John. Uh, so it's important. It's really important. Uh, the spirit of the Antichrist is most definitely the spirit of the dragon, Satan. Uh, and it has touched a lot of Christians today, which is why it's important to be able to tell who's a real Christian, who's not a real Christian. A real Christian will admit their... Uh, their dirtiness, their uncleanliness. They'll admit their sin. Uh, a fake Christian won't. Uh, and also, there's more in-depth things. They also won't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They won't believe that Jesus rose again on the third day. They won't believe in the resurrection, in other words, or the importance of the resurrection. So I'm going to ask a question real quick. Do you believe that the blood of Christ has saved you? Some people who aren't actually Christians will not believe that. Uh, it's very important to understand that the blood of Christ that was shed on the cross is what is purifying you. It is his blood, which you could, there's even a theory around nowadays uh, because of Ron Wyatt's discovery of the Ark of the Covenant back before 1999. We don't know exactly what year he discovered it. Uh, he discovered the Ark of the Covenant and essentially has claimed that the blood of Christ, the living blood of Christ, was on the opposite side of the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant before, uh, or, well, opposite side where from where they put the blood of the red heifer for the pur purification ceremonies in uh, Israel. So, all that being said, it is important to understand that it is the blood of Christ that is saving you. The blood of Jesus Christ has saved you all your sins, all you have to do is accept his blood that was shedded on the cross. And I don't think I said a real word there, but uh, you understand what I mean. There's lots of archaic English in the Bible, especially if you read the King James Version. 
Uh, personally, I read NASB, which does have some archaic English, if I because I read the 1977 edition of it, and there's reasons for that reading. I won't get into that today, but that's how you tell uh, who is Christian, who isn't. There is another thing that that is extraordinarily important in relation to this. Do you, how should I put this? Is Jesus to you the Son of God? Because if he isn't, and he's a part of this entire other ordeal, you have a little bit of an issue. Because uh, believing in the Trinity is pretty important. The Trinity is God in three forms. Jesus is not God, but yet he is God. It's very important. Uh, the Trinity can be described almost like water, uh, dihydrogen monoxide, if you know the chemical name of water. Uh, I know I'm a weirdo. I know the chemical name. Uh, but dihydrogen monoxide uh, has three forms. It's one of the only elements that you can see in nature that has all three of its forms come up very easily. Uh, others don't come up very easily, especially when it comes down to metals because they have to get really hot. Uh, and actually, most metals, you can never see the gas that form of them, but I'm getting beyond myself. Um, water is in three forms, but it is all water. Does that make sense? Well, let me get, get this to you. You have gas, also water. You have ice, the solid form, also water. And you have liquid, also water. All of them are dihydrogen monoxide. That's how we view the Trinity. The Trinity is all God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and the Father. All are God. In the Trinity, they are all one of the same. So Jesus, therefore, is God. He's also, but he's not the Father. Uh, that's, that's the way you put it. He's not the Father, but the Father's also God. That's how the Trinity works. If you don't understand the Trinity, uh, I beg of you to read your Bible a lot more because it does explain it a little bit. I don't know the verses on top of my head, though, for that. Uh, but reading your Bible on how to test people or test your own personal faith, because uh, James does speak of that, uh, testing one's own faith. Uh, that's James chapter 1. Uh, knowing that you are saved is extraordinarily important. I think that's where I leave this off with. Because this is a... How should I put it? More of a video where I want to make sure my viewers understand whether or not they're saved. Because there are many, many, many false Christians nowadays. We know that at the throne judgment, the white throne judgment, that many people will go before God and they will confess their goodness. Actually, according to the Bible, everyone at some point in their life had confessed their goodness. Even I confessed my goodness at one point and was surely mistaken uh, to God. And that's how it is. You can't do that. You cannot confess your goodness to the Lord God because you are not good. You are a sinner. We all are sinners. I think that's where I leave this off with. I'll get a new video up soon. This is just a short, so have a nice day.